Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Tartlecast, also known as TCast. Yes, there are other ones out there on the uh, podcast marketplaces out there for listening to things, but we are the one and only Data TCast coming to you from Tartle. We have a document here that we want to share with everyone, and it's a document on our data commitment. We think it's important just beyond what's in terms of service, privacy policy, the way that your technology is built is also to fundamentally state and codify this down in writing, which can be shared as a document, passed around, and people can go back to it and hold us accountable for what we've written as and how we are actually acting. Do you think that's right? Yeah, I think it's it's important. If we say the word commitment, yeah, then that should mean something. And this document's broken down into five specific parts, uh, data consent, data ethics, data equalization, global data inclusivity, and data sustainability each of which we have defined as clear as we can with a couple of paragraphs. And so what we'll do is we'll break this down across a couple of episodes to talk about each one individually. And today we want to start with data consent. So Jason, you want to team me up on this? Yeah, I want to talk first about the individual and his fundamental right Hmm. in their personal data and what that looks like through Tartle, what's happening now maybe, and then through Tartle, how they they can take back gain their freedom and have control of their personal data. Yeah. It's uh, it reminds me a lot of, um, and this is data consent. Yeah, this, so. is, this is data consent. It reminds me a lot of, for instance, you go into a hospital, they give you a document. Okay. I'm consenting to the surgery and whatever that else needs to happen for the surgeon to keep me alive. Yada, yada, yada. Right. You have the choice in doing that. Or maybe I'm a, my own owner operator of a CDL. I drive my own truck. I have all my choices, what I want to pick up, what routes I want to drive, what goes in the truck how the truck's going to be driven, everything of the sort. These are my choices. But much of society today, you know, before we had come to the aspects where society is becoming very clear on data, we, you know, or larger corporations felt, well, it's on the internet. So yes, we could just use it however we want. We don't really need consent from people. It's there. Why? Everything else we've done in our lives, you know, has consent based to it. And there are judicial laws and proceedings around consent for everything that was outside of the internet. But now we're starting to have this focus because so much of human society is spending their time online. Everything we do becomes so inherently interconnected. So consent is now something that has to have a very forward approach in terms of policy, structure, technological design for people and their data online. I hope that answers that. Yeah, it does. And and so data that's collected, data that's stored, data that's analyzed, and data that's used you as an individual are creating, you know, I mean, creating gigabytes of data a day. Mm. And this, this data is very personal. This is the problem where we run into, you know, whether it's GPS, you know, location, whether it's your credit card information, whether it's you logging into a medical app or, yep. or going to mint.com and logging into your bank account, mm-hmm. you know, your investments, whatever it is in all of these, your sleep times when you wake up. Yeah. Uh, it's basically in a weird kind of way, it's kind of that data is kind of stalking you like in what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? So this is where data consent comes because you wouldn't want a person following you all around your life every day and writing things down exactly what you're at 1231. They did this like a private investigator. Well, it's, you yeah, know, or like the paparazzi, like if you're yes. a moose, are you get annoyed? Because you didn't ask them to follow you with the camera. Yes. You know, if you want to choose to be, you know, in a documentary and have people follow you, sure, that was your choice. You consented to be on film, you know? And if, if we think about this, the technology now is, it's twofold. You are defining yourself online. You are generating information about you, okay? So by writing that and producing it, you're consenting to publish. That's one. But then there are systems which observe you ones that you want to interact with or need to interact with, but they'd still need your consent to be capturing that information on you and identify it to you as a person. Yes. So both of these things have to be married to it. So specifically within our technology at Tartle, consent is baked into that model, into this thing we call the data packet, which is the storage mechanism that allows people to vault this information of them defining themselves and other systems which watch them. So you have the ability to take all that data, package it into something and say, okay, Now I can consent to the sharing of Mm. all of those things. So beyond me just saying, okay, I consent to the systems recording me, I'm going to consent to sharing it. But as now it's mine, it's my choice. Yes. I get to understand who it goes to, how it gets measured, stored, analyzed, collected, all of those things. Yeah. And and so before we get to where somebody actually consents, Mm -hmm. I want to get into understanding 
you know, from a macro view of the Tartle system in its in and of itself, and you don't have to get too technical on this, but I, I want to understand how the data is being used in the Tartle system, what information is being given, and then how is that information being used at mm -hmm. the end result, if that makes sense? Sure. So, so we have the knowledge before we have the consent. Yeah, that, yeah, that's really interesting. So everything that comes into Tartle uh, comes in encrypted. It actually, be, it's technologically removed from Tartle's ability to use that information. We have to ask you to use it. Sign up process, every single step is asking you to put this in and we're going to tell you why it needs to be used and we, we need you to give it to us. Yes. It's not just saying put these things in here. We go through the whole process and all of those steps. And then, for instance, we have a very interesting integration. So if there are technological systems that observe you just through the aspects of technological connectivity to get your phone or a device to connect to our servers, we give you all of that information. We want to make sure it's transparent to you. But for us, we can't see it unless you give it back to us. Mm. We can't actually identify it directly back to you unless you choose to share. There has to be consent in that nature, but it's your choice. You can store it, right? You can vault it, or you can, and you can choose to share it, or you can just store it and do nothing with it. But that's all for you. Yeah, and that leads me to the next part that makes us different from a lot of other companies. And that is our perspective is that consent is an ongoing process. Most definitely. Data is not static. So consent can't be static. Systems will change. Information will It's not grow. one private privacy you sign real quick, and no. then for the rest of your life, you're just sharing your data. Imagine that every single piece of data is its own little contract mm -hmm. as it gets transmissioned from peer-to-peer -peer on Tartle. So with that, it comes with a record of exchange and a record of consent every single time for that one individual piece of information. So it's not static all across you because maybe there's a whole bunch of me, but I don't want to share at all. Maybe I just want to share a little bit of a sliver you can consent to doing just that little sliver. So uh, I want to read this from our data commitment. Our perspective is that by empowering individuals mm -hmm. to make decisions about their own data, we can build a more trustworthy and responsible data ecosystem that benefits everyone. Absolutely. Because when you start to bring humans into the fold, you give people the option. People will take to that option in droves because they didn't have the option before. You give people choice. It's a very empowering thing to do. But again, it's not Tartle's responsibility. It's people's self-responsibility to take that thing, which they are generating, and manage it. You know, it's not like I turn the car on and just throw it in neutral and just roll it down the hill. No, you have to drive it. You have to steer it. It is your automobile, which you are responsible for. This is your data. Here are the tools. Be empowered with it and do great things. But that's what we're here for. So if somebody wants to know more about, let, let's say it's an enterprise or SMB, a small business, small sure. medium business. And they want to look at like what Tartle is and maybe even looking at purchasing data from Tartle that has this data consent in it, mm -hmm. you know, data ethics, all that that we're going to talk about in the next episode. But how, how would somebody go about learning more about Tartle and learning as like a, a, a company how to purchase data? Easy, super easy. You can go to Tartle.co, T-A-R-T-L-E dot C-O. And if you want to go a little bit deeper, slightly more granular, you can go to Tartle.co forward slash buyers. And that will re bring you through all the aspects outside of the macro theme, right? Of our unified, you know, data infrastructure that we're applying to the internet and businesses. You can say, oh, I want to get into the niche aspects. Like I want to go into just directly purchasing information. Teach me how to do that. We can teach you how to do it. Total.co forward slash buyers. Thank you.